So, you're planning a trip to the Swiss Alps, and like me, I'm sure it's a dream come true. Going to the Swiss Alps, especially in the hiking season, is going to be an incredible experience, and this video is going to help you plan. I just got back from the Swiss Alps, and I was hiking in the beautiful valleys of the Jungfrau region, all the way over to Zermatt on the border of Italy. I went to lots of popular places, and a lot of hidden gems off the beaten track, and I just thought I'd put this video together for you as a travel guide, so that you can get excited about your upcoming trip to Switzerland and to start making some plans and to save some of these places I will link below in the description as well the video link to every location so if you want to know more about Lake Breens if you want to know more about Grindelwald for example just head down below and you'll find the full vlog are you winding me up if you're on the fence and you're still not quite sure if you're committing to going to the Swiss Alps, let me start with the best three reasons why I think you should go to the Swiss Alps in the hiking season, late spring and all of summer. The number one reason, guys, is the breathtaking scenery. The Swiss Alps boast some of the most stunning and picturesque landscapes in the world, towering snow-capped peaks, pristine glaciers, crystal clear lakes and lush green valleys create just a breathtaking spectacle. If you're like me and you're a nature lover, maybe you like hiking, maybe you're an avid hiker, or simply just seeking tranquility, the Alps offer a wide range of outdoor activities and opportunities to immerse yourself. And honestly, when I was walking and hiking and exploring the Swiss Alps, there were times where I thought, it was CGI, I couldn't actually believe what was in front of my eyes, it just didn't look real, but it very much was, because <laughs> one of the best reasons to come here, guys, is it's just outstanding natural beauty to the next level. <laughs> it's not bad. The second reason is just how accessible and easy it is to get around the Swiss Alps, either hiking or on public transport. The cable car systems, the trains, and the scenic trains, everything is built up and they've spent fortunes making it easy for you to get from town to town, village to village, and some of the little villages that I'll mention later in this video, you'll see them on the map or you'll see them with your own eye and you'll think, well how the hell? Do we get up there? But in Switzerland, it's so easy. There's cable cars everywhere, trains everywhere. And so you'd be really surprised just how easy and hassle-free it is to get around the Swiss Alps. It's just so convenient. And the third reason is if you love the outdoors like me, there is just so many activities for you to enjoy here in the Swiss Alps. It really is a paradise for hikers and outdoor enthusiasts during the summer months. I started my trip at the very end of May and at the beginning of June. Now, I would normally say push it back a little bit, maybe to the end of June or the beginning of July onwards, just because that's when all of the snow and ice has melted and all of the high mountain passes and hikes are much more easier and available for you to do. I was a little bit too early, but that's just something that I learned from my trip. Made some friends, oh my God! An avalanche just started. So those are the three main reasons to come. So hopefully I've convinced you, I've pushed you over the edge and now you're ready to book your flights. But before you do that, you want to know a little bit more about what are the best places to see and the best experiences to try when you go there. Well, this is the reason I've made the video for you. But first, I'd like to quickly mention today's video sponsor, a very important one. If you are tired of getting spam emails, spam mail in the post, and those annoying phone calls where you don't know who they are, and you pick it up and it's someone trying to sell you something you don't want or that you don't need. Yeah, today's sponsor, Incogni, can help you get yourself out and off these lists so you'll stop getting spam, you'll stop getting these phone calls, and you'll be protected as well going forward. If you're not aware, your information, who you are, where you live, what you like, like, what you like to buy and what you search for. This information is extremely, very valuable. And there's a whole industry of data brokers who take your information and sell it on for a lot of money. And this is the reason why you are getting bombarded with junk mail, spam, and of course, annoying phone calls. Incogni work tirelessly to take you and your information away from these companies and off these lists. And they continue doing it for you all year round. Once you create an account, they instantly start making requests to remove you from these data lists and they begin the process of blocking your information from being sold to any more companies and any more data brokers. 
Incognite also has a dashboard where you can see exactly how many requests have been made and how many lists you've already been taken off in real time. So if you're ready to say goodbye to spam, junk mail, random callers, and to remove yourself away from this dark and shady industry, then check out Incognite today. If you use the code Paddy Doyle, they'll also give you 60% off. Use the code Paddy Doyle to get 60% off and it will actually help the channel out as well and fund more of these adventures around the world. So here's the first place. Behind me here, you can see Lauterbrunnen Valley. Now this list is in no particular order. These are all incredible places, incredible experiences, but I wanted to start with this one because this was the place where I really felt like I was living in a simulation or it just seemed too good to be true. My eyes were just wide open <laughs> to what I was looking at. I couldn't actually get my head around just how beautiful this place is. I was a little bit skeptical about going to Lauterbrunnen because I thought it might have been overhyped or it was all Instagram and it was all fake and manufactured. But when you actually get here in real life, you'll notice and you'll understand that it's very much real. It looks exactly like the pictures, even more beautiful in real life, actually. For me, it's my favorite place in the whole of the Swiss Alps. They have people coming down doing skydiving. Just landing in this field behind me. They must fly right up there and then they must get the most amazing view. Just above Lauterbrunnen is a town called Wengen, a very small little town with a supermarket and a little school and some nice streets and a typical Swiss Alpine village. But what sets this place apart for me is the incredible views of actually Lauterbrunnen and the valley below. So yes, Lauterbrunnen, we just talked about how beautiful it is, but Wengen gives you that perspective, that looking down shot. There's views and then there's views. I feel like that's a saying here in Switzerland. Coming to Wengen means that you don't really need a drone to fly up and appreciate how beautiful the valley is. From above, you just get on a little train, go up to the top where Wengen is, and then you can go to this gorgeous little church. There's actually a few different viewpoints as well and other hiking opportunities in Wengen. It's definitely worth a night if you can stay there. I stayed at this gorgeous Alpine hotel that had a spa, which had like a big heated swimming pool and a sauna and a steam room and a delicious restaurant. There's really good food in Wengen and of course you have the incredible views. You can also take the cable car up to this incredible ridge hike as well and from Wengen it's about a two, three hour hike up and down towards Grindelwald if you really feel like doing a 10 to 12 kilometer hike like I did. I actually came down the wrong way. I started in Grindelwald and came down to Wengen through a storm, but luckily the next day it cleared and revealed just how beautiful Wengen is. Good morning everybody and uh, look I'll just get straight to the point. I can't actually believe my eyes. <laughs> Gimmelwald, not to be confused with Grindelwald, which we'll talk about later, is this tiny little village set on the very edge of this glorious mountain. There's a cable car that goes really steep up to Gimmelwald, there's waterfalls sticking out of the mountains, and once you get up to this tiny little village, there's only a couple of things to see and do. There's the mountain hostel, which is where I stayed, it's quite famous, and it's got delicious pizza and delicious local beer. Some of the beer in this village has actually won awards for some of the best beer in the world. But the highlight is just walking around and soaking up the views. If you want my recommendation for a really easy hike, right, come up to Murren, come up to here, and then just hike down to Gimmelwald where I was staying. It would take you about 35 minutes downhill, and then you could have a pint and a pizza at the hostel I was staying at, gorgeous views, and then get the cable car back up here. Let's talk about Grindelwald now, probably the most famous place in the Swiss Alps and it is stunning. It is absolutely gorgeous. Once you get the train up from Interlaken, you'll arrive and you'll just be blown away instantly by the views of the Eiger and the whole Jungfrau region and there's a lot to do. You can base yourself in Grindelwald. It is a bit more expensive, especially on the weekends. It gets very expensive if you're trying to book a hotel. But this is the place where tourism is thriving and there's so many things for you to do. 
You can get the Eiger Express cable car, for example, up into the mountains and start your day trip on Jungfrau Jok, which is the highest station in Europe. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's like an adventure park up in First, which is a part of Grindelwald. You take a cable car up in that direction. You can do the cliff walk, you can go paragliding. Lots to do, lots to see, and it's beautiful. Just book ahead months if you can, your accommodation, because it's expensive. <laughs> but all is made up for. Check out this view. You come outside and bosh. Jungfrau Jok. Now this is a day out or a half day out because you're going to be going on the cable car, then you're going to be getting on a train, a train that literally goes through the mountain. It was built in 1896. It's the highest train station in Europe. And once you get off the train and you get up to the viewing platform, you're gonna be at 3,463 meters, which is 11,300 feet if you're American. Welcome to the top of Europe. Amazing views of the valleys and the glaciers. Now, it will be crowded, but you can escape the crowds quite quickly. You know, once you've seen the view and you've taken a picture, go downstairs, get onto the mountain trail and go have a little hike. I hiked to a little mountain cabin place where I had some delicious cheese and soup and a couple of glasses of beer and I tried the local grappa and then I hiked back down to Jungfrau Jok and got the train back. It's an expensive day out and the train passes and the Swiss travel passes don't cover or give you any discounts anymore in 2023. They changed the rules so you will have to pay the full price of at least 200 francs, maybe 250 francs. It's not cheap. But if you watch my full vlog linked below, you'll be able to make a decision if you think it's worth it. You can order soup with sausage or cheese. I ordered it with cheese and I thought that they would just grate some cheese on there. But look at this. I give you a massive piece of cheese, the size of my face. Interlaken is basically the lowland hub. This is where you arrive off the train. You probably come in from Bern, maybe Zurich, even maybe Geneva and when you get off the train at Interlaken this is where either you quickly get on another train and go up to the higher areas of the places we've just been talking about like Grindelwald or Murin. It's got the most incredible location right in the middle between two of the lakes, Lake Kun and Lake Breens and they have canal systems and there's lots of day hikes to do there. I went up to this beautiful viewpoint and it was just gorgeous, even though the weather was quite bad that day. It was, it was, it was such a beautiful hike. It was my first hike in the Swiss Alps. Interlaken is the base and the hub for many hotel chains. There's, you know, lots of restaurants. There's lots of pubs and bars. Not like crazy nightlife or anything, but you can definitely watch the football, have a glass of beer and stuff like that. There's a McDonald's there. So it's a hub. It's a place to feel safe once you've started your trip or once you've finished as a place where you can find cheaper accommodation and then go off and do day trips, for example, and some good hostels. I'll link some good hostels below too if you're coming to Interlaken. Yeah, the hostel itself is really nice. It's in this beautiful old building and it's been a hotel for like hundreds of years, but it's been recently converted into a hostel. And uh, yeah, just across the street, cheeky little bakery. Next to Interlaken is Lake Breens, where you should for sure experience one of the incredibly beautiful ancient amazing pieces of engineering which is the paddle boats and today we're going to be going on a boat <laughs> these boats start in Interlaken and go all the way to Breens which is the town on the far east side of the lake and just an incredible experience it's about 35 francs uh, for a single but again if you have the train pass it will be 50 percent off there's four or five stops and I encourage you to get off at least one or two of them. I got off at one which had this beautiful hotel and a little hike up to a waterfall where you could actually walk behind and then you spend an hour there enjoying that and then you go back down and get back on the ferry and then get off at Breen's. And um, you could spend a whole day on that boat. It's got a restaurant inside, it's got champagne and it's got sandwiches and you can sneak your own food and beer on there and then just have a picnic somewhere else if you want to save some money. A beautiful experience in a beautiful place right next to Interlaken of Lake Breens. Wow. This is the coolest engine boat I've ever been on. RA Gorge came to me through Instagram Reels actually. I was planning my trip and dreaming of Switzerland and this came up and it just looked absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see behind me, 
It is a natural wonder, a marvel, if you will. Basically, it was formed during the glacial ice age era and it carved this very beautiful gorge and the way that the river snakes through sometimes it's very narrow and it does open up occasionally and there's waterfalls and they've built this really gorgeous path that you can walk alongside and through the gorge it's only 10 francs one of the cheapest things and activities that i found in switzerland quite rare to find something cheap in switzerland and this was incredible really good value for money and it takes about 1.7 kilometers to walk all the way to the end and then you can turn around and walk all the way back and uh, there's also a bus that takes you back into the town of Miringen where um, this is near so I'll leave the link below because it's quite hard to find but uh, a fun day out and absolutely beautiful Zermatt is the home of the Matterhorn, one of the most striking and famous mountains in the Alps. You might recognize it from the chocolate bar, the Toblerone, although it's been taken off the packaging now because they don't make it in Switzerland anymore. But anyway, Zermatt, what a beautiful little Alpine town. You can see that it's probably way more geared towards skiing because just of how many slopes and cable cars they have and gondolas but for the hiking season there's lots and lots of hiking you can go all the way up like i did to the very summit of the glacier and look down on the matterhorn because you're way up there at 3500 meters and then lower down you've got lots of hiking opportunities i did the five lake hike one day where you get to that famous lake with the reflection although when i went a big storm blew in just as i got there so i didn't get the incredible view and the town of Zermatt itself, loads of hostels, beautiful hotels, you can get yourself a Rolex and a Swiss watch and uh, it's a big hub again for this area of the Alps. For me the best thing about Zermatt is actually staying in my hostel, having a glass of wine and looking up at the imposing, striking, incredible, mesmerizing Matterhorn mountain. Definitely go to Zermatt and go hiking, go up to the Matterhorn, go see the glaciers, incredible experience. This is unbelievable! Oh, there's the Matterhorn! Lake Urshiernensee, which is quite difficult to say, and I probably said it wrong, is incredible. And you take a little cable car from the town of Kandersteg up to the lake trail and then you walk down towards the lake and then you can loop around and up and get completely lost. Soak in a stadium of mountains around you. It's almost like you're in New Camp in Barcelona where you've got the football pitch, but instead of it being a football pitch, it's a lake and then instead of seats, you've got just walls of rock. The footage doesn't do it justice. When you see it in real life, when you're there in real life, again, it's just like Lauterbrunnen. It has to be seen to be believed, but I promise you, in the flesh, it is just as beautiful as it looks on video. I decided to come off piste a little bit, get more of a visceral experience, and just clambered up this steep hill. Not too far. You can see a couple of dudes down there. Gives you a little bit better view, a bit higher up than the, the beautiful path itself. So, I hope that was useful, and if you're going on a solo trip to the Swiss Alps, good luck, stay safe, and have a great time. It's incredible, it's a dream come true to be there. And if you're looking for travel buddies, then maybe you could come on my tour, because I'm going back to the Swiss Alps in July 2024. I'll be taking a small group of people, and the information for that tour is in the description below. A bunch of other information below as well. Everything I mentioned, plus much more, all linked for you. It will be a little document in the description, hopefully, that you can start putting onto your phone or into your little notepad. Have a great time in the Swiss Alps, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.